And it's another Mike and Mike's Off-Air Podcast. Mike O'Neill right here. Mike Pasto over here. We promise we will not get quite as heavy as we did with last week's conversation. An important one to have, and I've had some follow-up conversations with some friends that I know and people that I know in the Tulare County Suicide Prevention Task Force as well. So it was a great conversation. I'm glad you were here for it, but... Things must be a little lighter today. Of course, you can always check these out online at my975fm.com or watch us as we're waving to you on our YouTube channel. And, you know, it is before, it is important because the most important thing about that dialogue is having the dialogue yep. and making sure that people are talking about it because, uh, sadly, the ones that are lost are the ones that are all bottled up and have nowhere to go. And I just hate, hate, hate to see that. So I talked about this earlier this week. Um, mm. I love popping, giving little pop quizzes every once in a while, like I did a couple <laughs> weeks ago with the uh, the median price for a home in California, which oh is now $900,000. Nice. What would you think this summer the average ticket for a concert is? Now, I'm not talking about average stadium tours. That's a whole other ball game. But the, for the average concert, we're talking everything from – Vina Robles to Stanford Stadium, if they have a concert there. Or even the Visalia Fox, right? Like, that's the Correct. range. Okay. An actual musical, music act that people have heard of, that right. they're going to go see. What would you think, 2024 summer of, the average ticket price for a concert? I'm really sad to say it's going to be wicked high. It is for me. Wicked, wicked high, because I haven't gone to see... I like I mean I like a lot of music. The music I, I, I listen to the most are kind of oxymoronic ends. I listen to some older classic rock I grew up with and a lot of Christian music. Hey, those don't belong on the same iPod. <laughs> but anyway, I that's where I go and everything's expensive now, with the exception of the one Christian show we're gonna see in November where it's nineteen ninety five for a ticket. Wow. But you sit wherever you sit. Wherever there's an open spot. So it's like the uh, the um the Southwest approach to ticketing it's get there early those who get there first will get the best seats yeah and okay. you see five acts all day which is great but anyway i'm that being the realm i'm gonna guess it's probably and sadly i'll say 150 dollars. i hope you're i'm close. not low you're you're pretty close it's not quite that much yet thank you Jesus. that'll be next summer 122 dollars <sighs> and 84 cents now my hard and fast rule used to be this tells you how long I've been going to concerts. I will never pay more than fifty dollars for a concert ticket. Well, I'm, I guess I'm not going to go see any concerts this year ever again. Because again, that's the average. I've gotten to a point now where I, I don't go to a lot of concerts because I just can't afford it. And and radio years ago, radio stations used to get concert tickets just for showing up. You just get there. Well, times have changed quite a bit. Uh, they're much more restrictive on that. Uh, Every once in a while, some extra tickets will flood into the system, and we may or may not get an ask if you want to go see uh, Eric Church at the Save March Center or uh, the – I would love if we got those tickets to see Journey and Def Leppard this summer. Last one I got to see on that time was the Eagles. Okay, so – Oh, my goodness. Those opportunities for us, you would think – because the thinking was, oh, you're in radio. How great you get to go to those free concerts all the time. Used, Used to be to. the case. <laughs> not, not, not so much anymore. So I, I pick my battles now. Okay. Still to this day, and I, we, we talked about it a few times, the last concert I've been to was two or three summers ago, seeing um, Green Day, uh, who else, Weezer, and... I'm blanking on the middle act right now, but I saw them in Dodger Stadium because that was a huge stadium tour. I, I now want to pick those tours, those occasions that are events so that you can <clears throat> say I was actually at. Like years ago, I would have loved to have said that I was at the Depeche Mode concert at Pasadena Stadium. To this day, that's the one concert I regret not going to because – that was that became such an iconic event people talk about to this day. Well, how about old school? Because I'm old school. Cal Jams 1 and 2 in Southern California. Okay. I was old enough to go to those shows, but I had to work. Was at the S Festival, uh-huh. and then it was 30 years later. But they don't have shows like that so much anymore. They're, they're few Just and the far one, between. What's the one in Sacramento this year, the big rock show? Uh, <laughs> Something shock. Okay, yeah, the, the 
The, that's yeah, cons- the, that's been consistent. A big, big show like that where the festivals, but yeah, big acts like Metallica, ACDC, mm-hmm. and a ton of smaller acts like I love. The, I talk to you about the Warning all the time. They're going to be at that show, and it's just really cool. But one hundred twenty five bucks. Yeah, that's it's too much. Too much for for me. I got I got to save up. I got to I got to pick my battles with that one. Or again, see some of the smaller shows like that are well below that. Like I cannot wait for Zumwalt Park to open up their oh, concert venue yes. when Lou Graham is going to perform with Asia. The, well, the lead Lee, singer from close Asia. Close enough for me. So, like I remember, I saw Colin Hay years ago. He was no longer with Men at Work, but it was him and. The guys playing music behind him sounded just like the guys in the band. So as long as the lead singer sounds the same to me, I can close my eyes and pretend. A lot of times it's close enough. You, you can, I mean, and let me tell you, I know that that I'm and I'm I'm blanking on his name. The lead guitarist for Journey for Journey. Oh crap! Anyway, he he obviously the, yeah. he started off with Santana and then morphed into Journey, and he's incredible. And you, I know he makes a difference. By nature of how good he is, but you can't tell me if they put a Cracker Jack band behind Steve Perry, mm-hmm. and if Steve could still sing the way he used to, it wouldn't sound that much different. Well, I don't know if you people. heard the news. I actually talked about this a few weeks ago that he made a big announcement. He has signed with a record label. Steven? He is coming out with new music. He wants to tour, and I think this all was spread out because he came out with that Christmas album a while yeah, back, yeah. and he loved doing that, so it took him a little while to realize, okay, yes, I still have the want, need, desire, and ability to do what needs to be done. And he knows, obviously, what it takes. So at some point within the next few weeks, he said he will be making some type of announcement. Because their lead singer, he is really, really good, but there is only, has only ever been one Steve Perry. He's just got that incredibly, amazingly smooth and warm voice. The tonality... Nobody has it. Yeah, so if you want to see Steve Perry in concert, obviously, if it's anywhere close to the ticket average, save up now. I'm going to work on it, and I'll, <laughs> and I'll see you at Zoom Walk this summer. Hey, listen, we talked about this once before. I think it begs a reviso. The, uh, the, famous, uh, the famous City of Visalia logo debacle. Aha. Uh-huh. It's uh, just yesterday, just yesterday, uh, and in fact, at its last two meetings, the Visalia City Council heard from residents and it seems to have made a difference. Uh, critical of the city's new logo, uh, they've made some decisions. Apparently, they are going to have multiple logos now. They're going to go to uh, a legacy logo, which will be the one that most people think is the only one they've ever had. <laughs> but guess what, guys? That's not even the case. In fact, uh, the city manager opened the meeting saying, hey, y'all. This is not the only logo we've ever had. It's the sixth of six. Mm-hmm. They change every every few years since 1948. We get, though, that this most current instantiation, y'all aren't too thrilled with. And as a result, they're actually going to do something. That new breaking through the V logo, I guess, selected from among 29 options. Can I see the other 28? And uh, <laughs> apparently they're actually going to open it up. And try to do that again. So they're going to try to. They're going to live with more than one logo, which still, as a branding guy, I don't know about that. I see. I like the idea from the standpoint. Of Steve Nelson, I thought, explained this incredibly well. Uh, I watched the last ten minutes. I wasn't actually at the city council meeting, but Vicega Stringer was nice enough to post a video that they got their hands on on their Facebook page the following morning. And they had the last 10 minutes where they kind of wrapped up the public discussion aspect, and each city council member weighed in on it. Steve was mentioning that if they go with the idea of having a, a heritage logo, as they're calling it, um, that or a legacy logo, I'm sorry, that that could be used with certain types of things. Maybe buildings, like, like on the letterheads, the official correspondences from the city, things like that. When you ta- start talking about um, icons online – there's so much detail in that logo, you shrink it down so much, a lot of that gets lost. So it makes sense to have another logo. He also pointed out that Fresno has multiple logos. The city of Los Angeles has multiple logos. It, now in, in the era that we are with digital print and we still have real print with actual 
press releases going out. It makes sense because what works it. in one format doesn't necessarily work in another. Yeah, it's too busy and too big to shrink yeah. down to much in print. So I guess I get that. It's just with audio logos, I mean, your thing is your thing. If Grappetti Automotive, I mean, everybody knows you can count on us. You can count. Everybody knows that. Mm -hmm. If all of a sudden was, we're really dependable, it wouldn't ring. No. It and, wouldn't ring straight through to Grappetti. I and mean, with that, it's the same message, but no, it's not. Yeah, there'd be no need to change it, though, either, obviously. With this, it's the need is there because people take in different media differently. The you look physical at a, issues. You look at the back of a T-shirt differently than you would the top of a business letter. And But I see the city's logo in both spots. What makes more sense? The trick is having them be close enough in look that when you see one – you automatically know, okay, yeah, that's the city of Visalia. That's the city of Visalia. How do they work that out? Well, I guess that will come up in the next meeting. It's going to have to be recognizable, though, although it seems like they are amenable to uh, reaching out to local artists for that potentiality. Because yes. the fact that the one, the uh, breaking through the V was from an L.A. firm, I think, kind of kind of really upset. I, I mean, you, you have a contact at the Arts Consortium, and I'm sure she was thrilled. I am going to talk with Donna Orozco about this. And Donna, if you're listening to this podcast or again watching on YouTube, expect that phone call very soon. I have her on every Friday to talk about the things going on in the South Valley because she also does a lot of stuff with the Times Delta. But with her role with the uh, Arts Consortium, they were mentioned specifically numerous times in that uh, just the last 10 minutes of the city council meeting say, hey, yes, we should have reached out to local artists. We should have reached out to the Arts Consortium to facilitate that. We have so much talent here. And as I was explaining to Amy, someone in our sales department earlier today, actually, everyone on the planet now has, has access to Photoshop-type programs with apps and things that 3D print can do if you're a Microsoft person. Uh, or with Macs, they were designed to do things like that, maybe a little bit better than PC. So anyone on the planet could come up with a logo. You don't have to go to L.A. or Irvine or San Francisco. We can do that all in-house. And everybody has an imagination. Somebody could stumble across the next great mm -hmm. not breaking through the V. I mean, look what po podcasting basically became a, a thing because I don't know this for certain, but people living somewhere, they're listening to their radio stations. I, I can't find the type of talk station or type of station I want, well, why can't I just do my own? The technology <laughs> exists now. We can do this. And and numerous other people have and made a pretty good living off of as it. As long as he's not the only listener. <laughs> so, yeah, with, with technology, there's some things I, I am a little leery about. We've talked about AI previously, and that mm. definitely I, I've got my concerns with that. But other things, giving us access to all these things is not a bad thing. No, sir, not at all. I'm just glad that they were amenable to the change. I'm glad you brought up that aspect of it because I, I like the fact that the city did what they did, made the decision they made. Meeting came about after they changed their logo on Facebook, social media, everywhere else, and people showed up at a city council meeting and said something. And then at the next city council meeting, they addressed it because a lot of times what will happen is during public comments, if you've never been to a a board meeting like that is during public comments, those on the board say nothing. Legally, they shouldn't. <laughs> and they didn't at the first meeting. They did after the second one. When is our second meeting about the Visalia Rawhide? I knew that's where you're going with this. I, I want some resolution with this, whether it comes from the city being a little bit more transparent in their stance on this and what ultimately they want to happen whether it's the ballpark being more transparent with what they want to happen. My fear is that both sides are digging in their heels to the point that come next year, we're not going to have a baseball team here in Visalia. And my bigger fear is that there aren't enough people concerned about it. It's, it's going to be like the logo. No one's going to complain until the team is actually gone. No one actually complained until the logo actually changed. Yep. And the thing is, I've gone to a couple of games. Attendance is lighter. <sighs> Attendance is lighter than I remember. I will say that. And I love my rawhide. Sean and I love to go to games. We love it's the 200 section right about 20, 201 right there. Mm -hmm. Little right of dead center. 
happy to be there. Peanuts in hand, messing up the entire row. You're welcome. And it's, it's a ball game, you know, and they're always 12 innings. God bless them. So do you have any thoughts as to why it is that the city was able to do an about face with this, but not with the rawhide? The only thing I can think of, the only difference is there's a, a third component with the rawhide conversation, the actual team. With the logo, it was all about what the city did, what the city paid for, what the city decided to do without getting enough public opinion ahead of time to say, hey, we are, we are, we're serious. We are going ahead with this. But again, it seems like we don't react to things until after they've happened as opposed to, hey, this is coming. I fear that not enough people reacted to the rawhide okay, like they did, which frustrates me to no end (laughs) being a giant baseball fan because it just, like you said, it just seemed like both sides were (gasps) and just sitting there turning blue. And that resolution never comes from that stance. It never comes from that stance. And I love my minor league baseball team, and I would love to see a dialogue start again and just a little bit of compromise and a little bit of walk back and a little bit of let's figure this out. And more honesty with us as those who are going to be impacted by the loss of the Rawhide as well. Again, kudos to the city. They did the right thing with the logo. I wish someone could take a better approach to this. Again, whether it's the team whether it's the city, and and do that because, well, if this is a step in the right direction for the city, they've realized the errors of their ways. Were there any errors of your ways with that conversation? Yeah, well, they have to make that decision on their own. Uh, maybe they'll need a maybe they'll need some kind of a mediator. I'm more than happy. <laughs> Mike, Mike Festo, come volunteers. on, come on, come on the Mike and Mike Off Air podcast. We will settle this like adults. We we will have that conversation because it's a conversation that needs to be had. Amen. I would love. My baseball team to stay here. Come on, I love my combo meals. I love my uh, my my plain, my beer bats. Yeah, I know. I said it. I, it's fun. It's just fun, and I would truly, truly hate. And they've even inculcated some other things over there. I love that. I saw a Christian concert there last year. Mm-hmm. That was really fun. Uh, I can't remember his name. Something St. Cyr. Jordan St. Cyr. Okay. Uh, he has two or three real hits, and it was right there, and it was just so cool. I mean, there's a hundred things you can do at that ballpark. It would be a darn shame to lose the resource. Well, I think, and we've mentioned this before, I, you know, the ballpark isn't going anywhere. It's owned by the city. So the team goes away. I'm wondering how, mon- how many of those extracurricular activities are brought in by the team as opposed to brought in by the city. That, I'm a little, like Irish Fest they have there every year well, and, and many other things. Is that I'm going to say the city because my son works there and okay. everything that's not, you'll notice that every, all the action happens when they're on the road. When they're not there, um, that's, when, that's when the local high schools will play games there because mm-hmm. how cool to play your, you know, your big game at the, at, the, at, the, at the pro ballpark. That's when the MMA fights yeah, came okay. in. The 559 fights were there last year. Other things were there. It's a perfect venue for so many things. Like you just said, the, uh, the, the meet and greet opportunity show uh, where you can have just about any event you could think of there. It doesn't have to be baseball themed. It's just a big, fun venue. Yeah, and that will live on, I would assume, assuming again that it's all those extra events are put on exclusively, exclusively by the city because it is their park. Um, but just from a baseball standpoint, to say that we have professional baseball in a city like Visalia, it was one of the selling points that brought me here. Them leaving isn't going to be enough for me to leave, no, <laughs> for the record. But it, it does take away something that we can hang our hat on. Well, it's like it's like with the water park in Tulare that's been closed how many years uh, now? They waited, they waited, the city took it on. They closed the water park dust i mean if the reason it's there isn't working then you're done and i I think the city's going to have a a real boat anchor on their hand if they don't have a a minor league baseball team in there they're going to have a big giant facility doing nothing 